everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is, wherever it is that you are. Welcome once more to another video podcast of Political News Time brought to you by yours truly, the founder of the PNT Live Network. And remember, if you would like to check out archives of Political News Time, all you have to do is follow the associated YouTube channel. Or you can visit politicalnewstime.com or pntlive.net, a website which I will update probably tomorrow morning, pntlive.net. And um, you can also check out Poor News Today for those of you who are interested in adult entertainment industry related news. Today we are going to discuss the latest news revolving around Jared Kushner and um, Vladimir Putin. Me. All right, a friend of mine on Facebook, known as Dorian, sent me the following um, news item that I want to share today. More than a dozen Trump administration officials, current and former, described a clandestine relationship between Jared Kushner and the CEO of a Kremlin sovereign wealth fund. All right. On a late afternoon in March, a large military aircraft bearing the Russian Federation insignia descended into John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City. Its mission, to deliver personal protective equipment and ventilators to nearby hospitals scrambling to treat patients during the peak of the coronavirus pandemic. And as I read further, I do want to let you all know that from my perspective, the Daily Beast does have a bit of a slant toward the Democratic Party, but I'm going to read it anyway, and then I'll talk about it. Governor Andrew Cuomo have pleaded for weeks with the federal government for additional resources, particularly ventilators to treat the thousand of COVID-19 patients across the state. Yet news of the Russian delivery surprise those in the governor's work office working to obtain additional medical equipment. They thought the ventilator support would come from the U.S. stockpile or from an American company. Officials in the U.S. State Department were surprised too, despite a department press release announcing the delivery, several senior officials working on the Russia portfolio in the department and elsewhere in the national security apparatus were unaware exactly of how the 45 ventilators had ended up on American soil. Half of the shipment was paid for by the Russian Direct Investment Fund. Really, all of this, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. If you want to read it for yourself, I'll put the link up over on Political News Time. But the whole point of this article seems to have to do with the connection, the cooperation, um, in the communication between Russia and the Trump administration. I can understand how this will be of concern to some people. Has it ever been of concern to me? No. And I'm going to tell you why. The reason it's not of concern to me is because we are moving toward a global society. That's why. A lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I just want all of you to look at this just from a little black woman's perspective. When I look at the ruling class of Russia and I look at the current political administration in America, just superficially, I don't see much difference. I see a bunch of white people. When it comes down to it, only a handful of extremely wealthy individuals are who control our planet. So I feel like this whole Russian collusion thing is a giant distraction. I felt that from the beginning because the common person in the United States of America does not care. Here's what I know when it comes to our current political administration over the past four years. It's brought to the surface a lot of truths when it comes to how we as a society view each other when it comes to the element of race and racism, class, 
and really a lot of misogyny and sexism. I feel that racism has been extensively weaponized and I don't like that. I, I don't like how the Democrats have utilized African Americans, me, as a shield and as pawns to push certain agendas, specifically when it comes to the defunding of the police and the progression of organized crime elements such as sex trafficking. I don't like that at all. Now, one thing I have liked about the current administration, I've really prospered over the past four years. A lot of you out there have. Financially, a lot of us commoners, common people are doing pretty well right now. And I'm actually doing better under a Republican administration than I ever did under a Democratic administration. So do many people I know, or so are many people I know. That's part of the reason why I switched political parties. There's a lot of reasons why, but I'm more of a Republican kind of girl. That's just me. There's a lot of white Americans whose ancestral roots are that of the same ancestral roots of people who live in Eastern Europe. Why there is this propaganda to divide the world as much as the world already has, you know, is being, is divided and, and just to continue that division, I don't quite understand. I feel like it's happened with people of African descent. We've always been separated since the days of slavery from who we are in our ancestral continent. I, I feel like um, a lot of the problems within the African American community stem from not knowing our ancestral origins that was taken away from us in the days of slavery, American slavery. But the same thing is happening to a lot of white Americans. They are being isolated from their roots of Europe, Western and Eastern Europe. It seems to me like Donald Trump is trying to reconnect certain people of European ancestry within the United States to their roots. Maybe that's why he gets along so well with Kanye West, because Kanye West, he's tried to reconnect with his African roots. Why do you think he mentions the fictitious name of Wakanda so often? <laughs> it's because he's telling his fellow African Americans, you know, take a look at where you come from and have pride in that. Over the years, I have spoken extensively about racism and how so-and-so is racist and so-and-so is a supremacist. You know, a lot of that was immaturity. A lot of things I said were when I was in my 20s and 30s. And I don't care if they're rehashed now, just like I don't care if my time in the adult entertainment industry is rehashed now. Because everything that I've said in the past Everything that I've been in the past, every action I've taken in the past has all been me walking a certain path in life to who I was meant to become in the future, who I am right now. And I don't have any shame because I like the kind of person that I am right now. But a lot of times when someone's referred to as being a supremacist, let's really think about what a supremacist truly is. What is a supremacist? Supreme. What's the root of the word supreme someone who's at the top of the pyramid of whatever kind of pyramid of whatever kind of infrastructure or industry or um, sect of society it is that they're talking about someone who thinks highly of themselves what's wrong with having self-esteem and thinking highly of yourself now should you try to bash somebody else put somebody else down oppress somebody no I don't think you should but should you think highly of yourself? Absolutely, you should. I have been labeled a black supremacist. Maybe in certain instances in my life, I have been. 
but I don't think I am. I think I'm a humanist, but I don't believe in division. I do believe in globalism and I'm okay with Jared Kushner. I'm okay with Jared Kushner hanging out with Vladimir Putin's people. I'm okay with Vladimir Putin. I'm okay with Donald Trump. I'm okay with Barack Obama. I'm not okay with Joe Biden. I'm not okay with Steve Bannon. I am okay with Ivanka Trump. I am okay with Omarosa Manigault Newman. I am okay with Kanye West. I'm not okay with Kamala Harris. So my political views, I, I'm a weird one, but I find politics to be fascinating. And um, politics is something that every young person needs to be aware of because there's patterns in politics. And um, the politics that we see within world governments are patterns that translate to the politics within online gangs, online groups. And that's going to, I guess, be our segue into my discussion revolving around what's going on with IP2 and what's going on specifically with a young man known as Ski Mask Andy. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my